Hi, this is Mike Edelhart, and I'm here with another edition of Inception, our podcast about beginnings, the beginnings of companies, new ideas, breakthroughs in science, sometimes even a little glimpse of the future. And today I'm here with one of our uh, most recent uh, portfolio company CEOs, David uh, Montiel uh, of uh, Bilingue app. Uh, David, great to have you here. Thanks for the invitation. Great to be here. So let's talk a little about you before we talk about the company. So Spanish accent, but I think you're in Germany and you've sort of been all over, had a very interesting and varied life. So talk a little bit about uh, your background and how you got where you are right now. So yeah, I am I am from Mexico and I live I live uh, uh, in Mexico. Uh, yeah, I think until I was 22, 23. <laughs> and after after finishing college, I I did my internship uh, in India. So I went to work for a company in India uh, called Satyam. And after a year there, I came back to Mexico. Uh, worked a little bit there for maybe a, a little less than a year in in a company called Softec. And after that is when when uh, maybe maybe bigger moves moves happened. Uh, I I got a job uh, at Google, where I was for uh, for I think around a year. Then I moved to LinkedIn, also there in in, in Mountain View. And after that, I, I guess it was I had been traveling so much, and and at some point during that stay in in, in California, I went to Europe for the first time. I loved it. So uh, when I got this this opportunity to come to to Germany to Hamburg for a company called Xing, X I N G, uh, I I took it and 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 I after that I didn't move from Germany. After that I I started realizing how actually moving so much uh, could be a disadvantage because it was hard to plan vacations or trips like for my parents or so. So and I was I was very happy and I still am in Germany. So, so let's talk about the company itself. So this is a passion project, essentially, that went uh, cosmic almost immediately. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. So, so talk about the idea and how you got started and, and that experience of um, having, sure. you know, sort of sure. take so, off. Uh, after I was in Germany for around, um, I guess, already seven years, uh, I, I had come to Germany into a context where everyone speaks English. So my motivations to learn German were uh, my, my, my friends over there and, and just being in society, but not really working. And the reason why I came to Germany was not to learn German, but I had done my, my efforts to learn by myself, right? Uh, I didn't really have time or neither did I enjoy too much going to, to classes. So I, uh, I started consuming not only lessons, uh, in audio, but also just like reading news and newspapers and 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 and, and audio books. When my level was good enough to understand the easy audio books, I, I immediately I immediately uh, turned that into my 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 favorite hobby. I would just walk. I I I, I walk a lot, so I, I I like to walk while I listen to something interesting. The more I, I increased the level of complexity of the audio book I was listening to, the more I realized that. My German was not as good as I thought it was, uh, especially because German is is one of uh, those languages that that reads in which written content is much more complex than than just conversational. Like there are words that you never use uh, in a conversation, but you will see them written. Uh, so of course, audiobooks come from written content. Uh, so it was it was clear to me that it was just not very practical once I reached a level that was too complex because I had to open my dictionary app. And then see what that word meant, and then put it back in my pocket. Continue with the audio, and then there was another word that I couldn't understand. So I started thinking, I, I what I need is this exact same version of this book, but in my language, so that I could just consult it and I can continue listening to the story. I was listening to uh, a song of ice and fire, which is a very interesting book, uh, and I was just like frustrated by the fact that I had to stop so much uh, uh, to to listen to it. So I started realizing that this could be a method throughout which people could could learn languages. Um, in the end, the product, uh, after a couple of iterations of an MVP, uh, I, I came up with this 
split string concept in which you will have the text in for me it was uh the upper half in german the lower half in spanish it's the same text and you also have the audio that you're listening to at the same time and the way to connect those was or still is just kind of a karaoke style animation so as you listen to a person narrating the the, the audio that you are reading you see the animation going in the in the same screen so you basically offered this out to folks and they took it and used it and liked it and it worked and it began growing simply because it was effective basically right? correct correct i th i guess the, the the push that i did give it was uh, uh, a kickstarter campaign so that was very interesting because uh, after i released a version which which i was comfortable uh uh I mean, it was hard, of course, for, for people to just find it. Of course, I, I, I made it public. I told my friends and so, but the, the, the initial push that I gave it, that I gave it was through Kickstarter. And this is, this was like super, super effective. The money was the least important thing that I could get from Kickstarter. Uh, there were two very important things. One was validation, right? Once people see your product, like the idea and, and are willing to pay for it, that's when everything changed for me like okay like this this could be much more than a hobby like people people are willing to pay for this i was very fortunate because i already had the android version what i what i sold through kickstarter was like hey please give me money so i can pay an iphone developer uh to make the the iphone version and then the other thing was that because i i i did something uh, through through my network, I, I told my all of my friends and, and, and people that I know, uh, like I don't need that you give me a lot of money. I just need a lot of people putting money because I suspected that the algorithm of Kickstarter would favor more a project in which there were a lot of people pledging uh, instead of a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So I I, I I had of course created a lot of, a lot of people had to create an account to put like one dollar. But but little by little it started escalating until it was actually recommended by Kickstarter to to everyone, and um, and after that, um, I had like twenty thousand downloads in like fifteen days, uh, and those were like the first real users uh, of the app. Like after that, the ripple effect you could allegedly you could also say that this ripple effect is what keeps the app uh, growing till now because we are still in the, in a phase where we are not yet investing in marketing. Right. All of your growth is just from people who use it and like it. And so yeah. uh, at that point, you decided to go into a, a kind of a well-known accelerator program, right? To sort of figure out with folks that had more experience how to handle this idea that had kind of taken off. And, uh, and so talk about that a little, because one of the reasons we invested in you is that initial uh user interest it was remarkable but we talk a lot in the fund about how leaders lead and in your case you went into an accelerator got some really super experienced impressive people as mentors and then they quit and joined the company so yeah. uh, so talk about that how'd you get them to do that and why sure there's many ways in which i could attribute uh things to to just sheer luck and and there's there's a lot of there's a lot of arguments to be made that that, that it was just the right moment but but yeah, I mean it's also it's also unfair to to just put it there uh, and, and blame it on luck. There's there's a lot of things that that I had done before that led to that moment being the right moment. Even within that time, the company kept growing, so the numbers kept improving because I would get a lot of mentors there, and and a lot of them would just give me a couple of tips. Uh, I was very effective and efficient on, on, on applying them as soon as possible. I, by that time, I was already working with a group of freelancers in Mexico. So uh, almost like the day they, I, I didn't have any structure, honestly. So the day I could get a, I would get a good advice on what to build. I would just have my meeting with my team and hey, let's try to build this. And and uh, it just kept working. So uh, it was also uh, the case that a couple of the people who were working at Texters, one of them, my 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 now co-founder and CPO. Um, they, they were, of course, uh, in a moment where they were looking for a project to join, which is, I mean, now I learned, like, it was also the case that uh, uh, 
they were eager to build a product, right? I remember them pitching me. I, I'm not pitching me, like just talking to me about their ideas and how they could build a product. And so when they realized that what I needed after finishing this accelerated program was, well, to build a team so that I could create a, a roadmap and a financial model to, uh, to, 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 to sell to investors and maybe get some financing, then uh, honestly, even like before I asked, it was clear to me that, uh, and then it was clear to them that they could just ask me, like, hey, maybe uh, if you're looking for a co-founder or, or if you're looking for someone to handle your finances, uh, just just let me know because I mean I am actually uh, after this program, I could I, I could actually put my teeth into something more specific, right? So all of those things came together, and now uh, two of the people who who are working at, at this accelerator uh, at that moment are now part of my team, and, and they are helping me grow quite a lot. Fortunately, that's kind of remarkable. So you just mentioned a minute ago, no marketing to date, right? That is correct. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I think. I have been uh, effective in, in trying to get the, the most out of the users that come for free and to have them recommend the app, so to say. Uh, so just was, how many, to give folks a sense of scale, how many the, the app, people are the using app, the platform right now? Yeah, the app has uh, around 4 million downloads now, and around maybe 400,000 monthly active users. Um, there, there's, there's been a couple of events that have, uh, that have created more and more ripple effects, right? So, uh, it, first of all, I, I remember very, very clearly one of the, of the first things that I heard in, in, in one of these quiet combinator videos. And it's like, just, I mean, the best way for your product to go viral is to have a great product, right? So it's not, there's not going to be any, any magic trick that will, that will make, that will make people, uh, download it or, or some, some gimmick. You just have to focus on the product, right? But within that, uh, like, of course, I started analyzing the reviews. Like, okay, how, how can I stand out from the other apps? Uh, or how can I make sure that people see this page and think, hey, this, this product might be good, or by increasing the rating, right? So uh, at the same time, I, I analyze the reviews and I focus on one thing that I want to fix. But when I fix that, I am improving the product. So all of those things help. Uh, I, at some point, uh, I had uh, uh, 4.8 stars rating uh, in, in the app. They changed a little how that works. Now it's uh, 4.7, but it's going up. So I, 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 I predict that uh, by the end of the next month, uh, hopefully we will be again at 4.8. And those things are what makes a big difference, right? There are other apps that, that of course, are bigger products uh, and, 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 and create, hopefully, uh, the engagement that I will create someday. But... When you compare them side by side, well, mine has 4.8 stars, right? So, so that's already uh, a decisive factor. So those are the advantages that I have been able to take uh, to make happen uh, within this product. And that has created also stuff like press, uh, which has helped quite a lot. Like the, the app has been featured like in the top 10 language learning apps in Forbes magazine, uh, Google Play. It, Google Play gave it editor's choice as well uh, at some point. So those are the, the kind of ripple effects that have made the mm -hmm. app grow and more downloads happen. Got it. You know, and I think one of the other things for us, uh, we're a world fund. Uh, it's a world app. It's not uh, entirely English centric. Uh, yeah. So it's language to language, any to any. And we thought that was a, a product approach entirely in keeping with the, the current uh, times that uh, uh, wherever you come from, wherever you want yeah. to go, uh, you can help. I think, I think one, of, uh, one of the most uh, yeah, appealing parts of, of the product, as you say, is that this methodology allows people to learn from Chinese to Russian. Like, like, like just, just imagine that, like this guy from Mexico build an app with which Chinese people can learn Russian. Um, because because the method is just it's just putting in parallel both of the texts right and both sentences mean the same thing uh, and 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 the power of that uh, is it, it it expands so so uh, we will definitely invest in marketing uh, hopefully uh, sooner than later but by itself it just has the potential to grow just because the, all it can grow in any market from any other market right yeah exactly and that's again one of the reasons we were so excited about what you 
accomplished so early when we first met you. So let's talk a little bit about it as a business. So here's a lot of people, a lot of people going around, comparing languages, bouncing back and forth, yeah. organically sort of driving into their brain. And we've talked a little bit about the science under this, these language concepts, and it works. How's it going to be a great and valuable business? How are you going to be something other than a whizzy app that a lot of people use, but doesn't actually create a lot of revenue, doesn't actually create a lot of value? Yeah, I, I think that what we are focusing on right now is to, is to of course, increase, increase user retention. And we have, I think we have very good arguments on, on, as to how we can build it. Like even, even before the getting creative part of like trying to build something new, there's a lot of inspiration we can get from uh, some products that are similar to us. Um, uh, so we see it, we, we kind of identified relatively clearly in these three, three types of products, right? The other language learning apps, obviously. So those use a lot of gamification. They use they use a lot of uh, reminders. They they try to appeal to the users like sense of uh, of, of, of uh, perseverance. So like, hey, you, you have to learn. So don't forget to learn, right? So that's also something that we are that we are trying to build in the app. But we have a lot of other advantages. We are also kind of a content platform, right? So kind of like Netflix or Blinkist or Audible. So. Uh, in in the way we see it, people are not going to come only because they want to learn a language. Uh, that's not the only advantage. They can also come for uh, consuming engaging content, right? So if we put uh, some content that people like, uh, that's also going to bring them back to the app. And then finally, there's also a similarity with uh, other apps about self-improvement, right? Like fitness, meditation, yoga, that also use a lot of... Um, a lot of other very interesting concepts that we can use, like user-generated content, uh, the, the creation of this relationship between uh, whoever can creates the content, uh, which is like people who make the videos in, in, in their cases, or, or for us, people who write the text, that we can exploit as well to create all of this engagement. So we are, we are currently exploring uh, everything that we can learn from those and how to apply it into this product, which will hopefully uh, increase all of, all of these uh, numbers that we are working on. So five years from now, <clears throat> you know, last question, kind of a, you know, typical wrap it up kind of question, but still interesting for you. What are you doing? What's feeling your app doing? Where is this all going to uh, go, do you think? I think I, the way I visualize the product uh, in, the, in, in that future, it, it has an established way to, to teach a language by taking a user more by the hand, uh, in the sense that you 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 enter uh, the app, we ask, uh, we identify what your level is, and we can we can recommend you content for that level with a sense of progress, so that after you dominate the content for your level, you move on to the next one, right? So that you can see your, your path moving forward. But at the same time, uh, the, the app will have this other like kind of browsing experience. In which you can just consume the content that we have and continue with that with an with a kind of Netflix audible kind of way. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to to use copyrighted content so that that catalog can have not only um, not only text that you see in Wikipedia but also books like Harry Potter or even songs like uh, anything from in any language. Right uh, at the moment we have a lot of that content. We are limiting, of course, to 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 what public domain allows us to bring us. But, but I think when we get to that point, we will be able to become the platform where language learners come to consume their favorite content. Can't wait to see how it all plays out. It's one of the more remarkable starts we've seen, and we look at a lot of companies. So we're excited to thank you, thank you. Uh, have had a chance to get to know you and become an early investor. And uh, anybody who's listening to this who wants to learn a language or even just experience another language in the context of their own, uh, should go grab this, try it out. It's uh, it's kind of remarkable. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Magana. Yeah, of course. Uh, to you, to, to the support that you guys have given us, it's 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 always um, it's 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 a, it's a soothing feeling to know that there's someone uh, by your side helping you uh, finding the right people to to contact. So and 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 in any other way that that, that we can. So it's it's great to have you by our our side.